Okay, so this is going to be the first lightning talk. So you're going to have to remember me to not lightning speak, but lightning talk. <laughs> so um, this is to summarize the hackathon uh, outcomes where we basically, um, there were some items on the roadmap uh, and some customer challenges where basically they wanted to do some AI code review but did not want to put the data out to a public AI service. Um, so there's some challenges associated with that, but I think we've got some uh, private hosted environments that we can show today running. Um, so quick background on me. So I'm Trevor Gay. I'm a software architect at Serata. I've been a Garrett contributor in attendance since 2018, I think was my first one at Cloudera. Um, so I've put some I usually use the hackathons to contribute from our separate forks back into main community stuff like offline re-index and performance changes like that. So it's a great opportunity to come back and, uh, and contribute to community. Um, the agenda quickly. So the hackathon goals themselves. Um, then get into the details of um, why I chose a llama and why um, and what LLM models can be used. Um, a quick demonstration of it actually working, and we can now do it, give side-by-side -side demonstration with ChatGBT and Alama doing code reviews side-by-side, -side, and then any questions. Okay, um, so the hackathon goal for this component itself was to add AI code review support, as I've mentioned, without using a public-based service like ChatGPT. We also wanted to gener generify the plugin. So we wanted to work with other AI services, um, whether that be Azure Open API or a Llama or um, anything that basically was private. So um, it was considered whether we should take the existing plugin and try and add support directly to it or whether we just use it as a starting point. So effectively, we fell onto the second position, which is we'll take that plugin, um, we'll put it into Garrett Code Review, so it's open source and uh, people can contribute to it. It's not just in an organization GitHub. Um, and we can start renaming and refactoring the plugin name for start. It's not chat GPT Garrett plugin, it's AI Code Review, it's generic now. Um, all of the configuration within it itself is now renamed. Um, so it's not chat GPT model, it's AI model, things like that. Um, so we've got a new uh, uh, plugin location, um, which is available, as you can see, in Garrett plugins. Um, when it's building, um, you will see that asset produced on the main plugins page. So you can click download the asset, put it in your own Garrett instance and play with it. Um, the current changes that I'm going to show you are up for review still, so you can download them and build them yourselves, but until they're actually submitted, you're not going to be able to just download the jar. You're going to have to get the code review if you really want to play with it at the moment. Oh, so um, which private AI service and why? So we've got two of them side by side at the moment with some pros and cons. So. We've got Alama on the left and Azure Open API on the right. Now, um, Alama is has got the benefits that you can have it as a local service. You can run it locally. You can do a Docker run on it, um, or you can host it in a private environment if you want to to get some proper performance out of it. It's free, which is I like that big tick box, um, and it's easy to test using Docker. So. Uh, two commands, which I'll show you later, and you've got an Alama instance running with the correct model. There are many LM models available for it. Um, I'll show you some restrictions on what models can be used um, later on. But the most important key is that they've now added open API compatible endpoints to Alama. That means that is effectively identical in its responses to ChatGPT. So they've come up with a, an API spec, and that is the driving factor behind uh, Alama and the models chosen. 
Azure Open API is hosted only, so you can't just run it locally. It's not free. It's not as expensive as ChatGPT, but it's not free. You can have it in your private network. Um, it would require some additional changes because they are not entirely Open API compliant. They have an endpoint called the same thing, but that does not mean the responses are the same. So there's still some work in progress to parse the data out slightly different for Azure Open API, but concentrated on getting a work in a llama during the hackathon. That was the main priority at the moment. So which models should you choose if working with a llama? And I'll just click here. The main driver is that the previous plugin and this plugin for simplicity uses functionality called tools, functions and tools. The driver behind that is that if you ask it to do something and it gives you back um, a large blob of data, you want to be able to easily say, you know, what line is this on? What's its relevance? What's its score? And it's much easier if it gives you that back in a JSON format matching a schema. So tools on models are something that allow you to apply parsers, formatters, something like that. So you can come up with your own function, like the plugin already had for ChatGPT, that said format the replies, find the schema, and the responses come back saying, your difference on this line with this context has got this score. That's really important. If you don't have that, it's just going to give you a general piece of text back saying, here, I've got all of these comments about it, which aren't as useful in a code review tool. Um, the page here's got a filter for tools. So by all means, play away and uh, try any of these models you wish. Um, I fell onto Quen 2.5 Coder simply because if you look at the details on it, um, it's got a the same performance, even though it's got a lower size. So the 7 billion um, uh, set was actually as quick as the 32 billion size model from DeepCoder, DeepSeek. So it's extremely performant. Um, and if you go onto their blog post, I think it covered something like 40 languages. Yeah. So all of the main languages that you'd really be looking at, uh, JavaScript, you know, Java, all of those good stuff, C++. So that, that was important, whereas some of the others either didn't support tools or weren't as applicable to code review. Okay. Demo. Oh, this is the good bit. Okay. So um, I'll quickly go, th go through the actual changes. So if you go to the readme now, um, there is a section, there's always been a section on how to build it, um, but there's now a section on how to start up your own local Llama service. So with running two Docker commands, you can now pull down the Llama image and run it, and then execute it with attachment um, with the required model or manifest that you wish. So two commands and you've got a llama running, go and install the plugin, play with it. The examples down below then show what it looks like, but also the um, required configuration. If you want to now run it with a llama, there's an example there. Um, so you can just take the plugin, install it in 310 and uh, go and play with it. Okay. So if I jump across onto my local Garrett instance, basically I've got a project here at the moment. I've enabled the configuration globally, so it's going to apply um, AI code review to every patch set that goes up. I'm going to do this quickly and chat because running a llama on your local box, specifically a laptop, is not the quickest thing in the world. Um, you can run it with minus minus GPUs, which is quicker if you have a good GPU set, but it tends to make it a little bit unstable. So if you're doing a demo and want to present it, it may not be applicable. <laughs> um, so I have a simple Java class here. Um, I actually went, so it's really useful for your testing. If you come out and go into a Llama, 
you can write something like write in Java bubble sort. And that's just the Docker instance that I started with the second command. You can see at the bottom of the screen, it's probably a little small, but there you go. It's writing in Java, the bubble sort. So I copy and pasted that bubble sort and just pasted it into this window. So there we go. We've got some Java code to go and let it review. On purpose, I've went and added some things that hopefully it'll pick up. So I've added an argument here that is totally unused. You can see it from the IntelliJ window there. It's light gray. It's an unused arg. We'll see if it picks it up on it. And I've added um, an infinite loop. So there's an index there looping over it, but it actually never increases it. So simple things, does it pick it up? So let's go and push this to Garrett. So if I just push to Garrett. Great. Change should appear. Uh, great, there we go. So uh, the first bot that's came back is obviously ChatGPT at the moment. It's running on a massive server, so it's going to be considerably faster than my local laptop on a Llama. But it's came back now. As I said previously, both plugins are running to allow side-by-side -side comparison here. So you'll be able to see how well GPT scores versus um, your AI code review. So say you wanted to start using a private service and you weren't quite sure which model to choose or whether you thought that Alama was as good as ChatGPT, at least you can run these side-by-side -side and compare the results that you're getting. Um, there is a lot of potential for configuration of this in the prompt engineering, in the relevant scoring that comes back to decide, I want to show this, I don't want to show this. So there's a lot of fine tweaking you can do in the background. So it's definitely worthwhile comparing side by side to get that ironed out. Um, I hear my laptop still churning in the background. So um, while it is, I'll show this in a moment or two to make sure it's not smoke and mirrors and it actually does work. Um, I'll come back to this review, but in the meantime, I actually have a review that I just run in the background. So exactly the same code, exactly the same issues. What did the two come back with? So to make life easier, I have configured two bots, so they are not the same bot name, which would make it really confusing. So ChatGPT is coming back with Chatbot and AI um a llama code reviews coming back with ai chatbot so if we have a look at the chat gpt responses it has come back and said that the commit message that i sent lacks detail that's very true because it says adding array sorting support it really isn't very useful at all so chat gpt was correct and um, it's complaining that the name of the sorting one isn't very good it, uh, it's got edge cases for null arrays great it's picked up the unused variable and it's picked up the while loop here. I'll come back to the commit message in a second for directives. Um, the AI chatbot has also came back. Um, there's the AI chatbot responses. So it has come back with the same thing. The commit message lacks detail. It should provide a concise summary of changes come back with the exact same bubble sort, unused argument and index. So effectively exactly the same information. So uh, there's no downside there at all in, the, in that uh, model chosen. Um, we support directives as well at the moment. So if you look at the commit message lacks detail, I replied to that. I just hit reply. There's no special terminology or language here. I just written the words. I can confirm that the commit message is as expected. Anything sensible English that is at least semi-referable to the, the commit or comment that it made, it'll understand. And it came back and said, OK, it's down here. I can confirm the commit message is as expected. And the chatbot come back and says, the commit message is expected to be ignored based on your request. So then it will re-review the review, and if you were scored negatively one, and that was the only thing that was still wrong with it, it would set it to zero or one and fix your, fix your negative scoring. So it's very easy to say here, that's 
meant to be like that or ignore that. I don't need to write tests. You don't need to know any special language to be able to do that. Um, I'll just check, hopefully, that in the background, the one I put up actually did work. Hold on. Hey, it's got one extra. Okay, so what did this chat bot actually say differently? Commit message is there, commit message is there. Oh, the method main should reflect the functionality of the method, which appears to be sort of an array. So it's picked up one additional thing in a llama that chat GPT didn't. It says main's not really descriptive. So in that case, it's actually got something extra. Um, I think that's probably as much as I can show. Now, this is a stateless set of issuing. Um, the ChatGTP, chat GPT plugin that it was based on also supported state full requests where you could build up a thread and submit extra files in the context and build up a, a thread of reviews. Um, that should work, but has not been tested. So <laughs> it's the tentative uh, driven development that we were talking about during the hackathon. It you know, may work. <laughs> We'll get the review in and then I'll, I'll, I'll move on to testing the stateful side. Uh, but at least at the moment, the stateless side's just working. If that's your chosen option, it's, it's working. OK, um, as I've pointed out before, all comments are welcome. Uh, please go to that code review. I'm going to post this into the main chat GPT channel on Discord as well, where all of the previous development was happening. Um, and there's a link there that you can get in the slide where this should be published. Once we get that submitted, you can just go and download the jar. Any questions? So um, at the moment, it's global. Now, actually, thank you very much, Matthias, for a wonderful question. On the future list, at the moment, you can configure per project. So if I go in, there actually will be per project configuration on some of this. Um, Test AI project, uh, repo settings, commands, edit repo config, not that one. So there will be project config. I have turned off the chat GPT one specifically on one and vice versa. What it doesn't support is project inheritance, which I thought it would have initially. So um, you cannot at the moment create a gripping for your projects and enable for a specific team only a llama or only gpt you have to turn it on either globally with a list of these projects are enabled globally or go into each project and add the enabled flag to the project config it would be a really useful extension to allow the uh, inheritance of project configuration so that it inherits down from all projects or from its parent but it should be a real simple extension to, to allow that. But you do have project config in short. Is the trigger point a patch set created event and is that configurable? Um, what the trigger is, is there's actually multiple triggers. So the main patch set created event will kick off the full review. That is absolutely correct. But in order to support you hitting reply or being able to give it directives where here, Let's ignore this for all of these reviews at the moment. You can give it directives. Those need to support comment added or comment change events, such that it sees you putting a comment on the review. So um, it's more than just the patch set create it. And no, it's not configurable because um, it needs to hook into those points. Configure which project and branches you get the AI feedback on. Um, projects, yes. Branches, no, not at the moment. So it would be for a given project, you can turn it on or off. If you want to be able to disable it based on branch information, um, we would need to uh, yeah, add some additional configuration uh, support into the plugin to say, you know, a, a branch regex or something. Simple enough extension, but. Does the plugin support interaction with the model or comment threads? Yes, it does. 
So the uh, directives that were there previously in the previous plugin are still supported. So you can comment on stuff uh, that's still there. Um, I assume that's what they mean by interaction with the model. You, you're not going to be able to train the model um, through it, but you, you can give it directives and you can create threads. So yeah, the, you, if you reply to that question, so the, you know, like a suggestion, like, you know, you haven't run the test or something, yeah, you, you can say, yeah, um, please just ignore the fact I haven't run these tests and it will accept it. And it'll either be on that review where you've placed the direct comment back to it, or you can give it a directive for a more open, like I want you to do this more permanently. Especially if you've got stateful where you've got a thread, it's gonna remember that across all of them. Any other questions? So they are using two entirely different models. So the GPT-40 is the default model used for ChatGPT. And I was using the um, Quen 2.5 coder model for Alama. So those models have been trained completely differently um, with different language subsets. Um, I would say really the base GPT-40 isn't as specific. It's not really an instruction or a coder specific model, but it's the most reliable one from ChatGPT with regards to giving responses. So it's probable that if you were still using ChatGPT or wanted to, that you would may want to start and, and make extensions to that model that were specific to your company. A really good example of that is, say, commit message headers. So most of us will have, uh, you know, be spent and commit messages that point back to the JIRA. Um, and you want to make sure that all your commit messages have a JIRA tag at the top of it or something. You will want to train your model to make sure that it understands that commit message should have in it. So like I would expect people to be taking a model and doing some additional stuff that's specific to their own company. And then that is what is placed on their server. Yeah. Any other questions? Great job. Oh, oh one more. Oh, oh okay. <laughs> nearly. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I just jump into it, um, it may scare you, but the, the sheer quantity of configuration options is staggering. There's a short section of it. <laughs> um, so the system prompt is really, uh, you know, is super changeable between models. There are models that, like for us to talk to these LLMs, we are being extremely descriptive, where it's, we're giving you a piece of content that's got this and this and this difference. Yeah. Oh, oh, to repeat the question, sorry. Um, so the question is, can you change the system prompt? So um, I'm replying by, yes, you can change the system prompt along with many, many other things that would affect it. So the system prompt is something that you could put in and there's some models that are as simple as review my code. Yeah, and it will review the code. If it's a coder specific train model, it, it, it understands what that prompt is and what you mean by it. Some of the other languages like the GPT-40, you're really telling it, you know, I want you to review this for maintainability, readability, accessibility. Super verbose prompt, yeah. So some of those languages in your company may have a really useful one that you've trained in and you can just dunk, dunk it in there. And if you ever want to change it, you don't change it here. You go and change it back in your model, what, what, what that means. Um, but there's other things like the review temperature, the comment temperature, the you know, what you dictate the minimum score or relevance to be. So if it comes back and it's a relevance of 0 0.5, it'll not bother adding it to your code review. But if it's a score above that, then it will add it to your code review. So all of that's configurable. Hopefully it's documented well enough in there. Um, the additional settings are simple things like AI type that have been added now. So if you install this, um, it will assume that it is behaving like a chat GBT plugin to maintain compatibility with the previous one. Just flick the AI type to Alama, add your new model, and then start playing with the support. But that's led on to another thing I've just missed. There is generic support added to the plugin. So if you want a service that you have not seen before, an endpoint you have not seen before, there is two new additional headings that are in this little subsection here. So you can now give it 
a general authorization header. So for example, ChatGPT uses bearer token. Azure Open API uses API key. So you can say, I want to specify any key as an authorization header. Here you go. You can now say, I want any endpoint I want to talk to. So you can talk to services and endpoints that we have not been able to support before, which enables you to test services that aren't in the list, get it up and running without any code change, and then put it in as a supported type. So hopefully that'll help, and it's documented there as well now. Okay, thanks. <laughs> Cheers now.